So that's the first uh, element of a 3D CS model that moves. The second is now the tolerances. So adding the variation to these nominal uh, parts. We're going to add a size tolerance to the holes on the R button here. So to do that, we're going to select our tolerances, specify the component that we want to add the tolerance to. Uh, for this, we're going to add a feature-based tolerance. And we want to use the size type. And I'm going to give this a name of size holes. Uh, you can add an optional description if you want as well. And then I'm going to specify what features I want to add the variation to. So in this case, it's going to be these features, uh, the points that were defined off these two surfaces, those holes there. And you can also specify your distribution type. Um, we're going to use the normal distribution type, so greater probability of being nominal with less probability of being towards the extremes. Uh, but if your assembly process was indicating a different distribution type, you could change your distribution to match that and mimic your assembly process as closely as possible. And then we're just going to use the default range of 0.1 for plus or minus 0.05 for the amount of variation with the zero offset, so no mean shift. And then just thinking ahead, we're going to be looking at the gap of this top surface to the button plate here. So we're going to need a surface profile on this top surface. So we're going to add another tolerance to that. Again, I'm going to use feature. This time I'm going to use the profile. And I'm just going to give this a name of profile. Say add, select that feature. Uh, you're able to add as many features as you want in the same tolerance. In this case, I'm just uh, wanting that one, that one surface. See that surface is added there. And again, we're going to use the normal distribution with a range of 0.1. So we now have two tolerances on this part. If we show our mesh and deviate, we can now see the effect of those tolerances on the nominal mesh. Hold it still for a second. And I'll turn that get a good view yeah. here. Because we're streaming it can be there we go. So this surface that it was tolerance just a minute ago is now varying plus or minus 0 0.05 normal to this surface. And these holes that we tolerance for size are now changing size according to their range and distribution. And all of these other parts have been previously toleranced except for this button plate, which we'll see is not moving currently. And we're going to use uh, the embedded PMI that's been applied to this part to add the variation. So when we look at the button plate on its own, we can see we have uh, GD&T callouts already applied to this button plate. Um, this is the Creo uh, embedded PMI. The only requirement is that these are applied to surfaces and not edges so that 3DCS can extract the features correctly. So to extract those uh, GD&T costs, we're just going to come over here to our update GD&T, specify which component we want to extract the callouts for, and those callouts have now been extracted. If we look at our uh, 3DCS tree here, the GDNCs that were previously the 
Creo embedded PMI have now been extracted and added as variation to the 3 dcs model. So if we deviate again, we can now see that this hole is varying for size and position, this slot is varying for size and position, and the pins on our back that will be the mounting surfaces for that power button are varying as well. So that's two different ways you can add a variation to your parts, either through manual 3DCS tolerances, or if you have embedded PMI, you can use that and extract that with two clicks uh, to add variation to your components. So with the moves and the the tolerances add to the model. We can now see how that will stack up through our assembly process. So with the parts in the built position, when we deviate, we can now see how that variation in both the assembly process from those hole pin clearances and the tolerances on the surfaces themselves will affect how the parts are coming together.